Welcome to the know, I'm Mika. Sea of Thieves got off to a roaring start for Microsoft in terms of players and sales, but there's also been some criticism from players about the game's mechanics and content. Rare responded to many of those criticisms in a brand new blog post and promised that in terms of things to do, players will have a lot more information soon. In the blog post, the developers discuss top feedback points like ship respawn, spawn killing, brig abuse, better mechanics around finding a crew, and cheating. As for content plans, Rare wrote, We hear and understand that people are keen to understand what our plans are for updating Sea of Thieves beyond the top experience fixes. We are currently in the midst of adjusting our roadmap based on feedback we have received since launch, with a ton of planning meetings continuing through this week. We plan to release a video next week updating everyone on how we plan to evolve Sea of Thieves moving forward. Ubisoft's done some bragging this week about how Far Cry 5 is the publisher's second biggest launch ever, but forget all that noise, we want cold, hard numbers. Investment firm Jeffrey's Group provided some estimates for the game's first week sales to French website Bouzier, and according to their calculations, Far Cry 5 moved in the neighborhood of 5 million copies in its first week alone. Jeffrey's analyst Tim O'Shea added that this is the first major launch of a game since Fortnite did its mini takeover of gaming, so we'll see how that first week stacks up to April's next big launch, God of War. Joseph Fares, the not-so-reserved director of the co-op adventure game A Way Out, has confirmed that he's already hard at work on his next game. Fares shared on the news on Twitter today, writing, Today is officially the start of the next game, and I'm incredibly excited. There's a lot of exclamation marks there, too. I love making video games, and I can't wait to show it. Considering that Fares and Studio Hazelight previously worked on Brothers in addition to A Way Out, it's probably not too much of a stretch to think that I'll have to do something with the co-op play. Maybe. Probably. If you've been curious just to how much Fortnite is making since it opened the gates to a mobile audience, we now have a little bit better of an idea. Sensor Tower just released a new report that calls Fortnite one of the most successful mobile launches ever. Since the game removed its invite-only status earlier this week, revenue has jumped to nearly $2 million a day, topping out at $1.8 million. On top of that, it's gotten about 11 million installs on iOS alone. And all of those players and all of that money has led to 15 million in revenue since its launch late last month. Sensor Tower head of Mobile Insights, Randy Nelson, said, Of course, the question on everyone's minds isn't how much Fortnite can earn, but how much it is poised to make when it eventually arrives on Google Play. If its performance on the App Store to date is any indication, we can easily see the game grossing 3 million or more per day once the Android user base grows to a comparable size in relation to iOS. Of course, that's nothing compared to Pokemon Go's crazy high momentary peak of 18 million a day, but still, that's a lot of money. Uh, millions are nice. We've gotten even more teases that something new could be in the works for Splinter Cell franchise, and this time it's coming from Ghost Recon Wildlands. We just learned a tiny bit about that first batch of year two content is gonna look like, and judging from the teaser, ghosts are going to team up with Sam Fisher himself in an upcoming content update. Ubisoft dropped a teaser for the content today, which featured the classic voice of Michael Ironside as the grizzled Fisher, along with the trademark night vision goggles. We have no idea what to expect from the content itself. Ubisoft says they'll provide more details this coming week. And if all this isn't part of a build-up to some kind of official Splinter Cell game announcement later this year, well, we're gonna freaking riot, Ubisoft. You hear that? Yeah, we said riot. We knew this was coming, but so long, lawbreakers. After months of trying what they can to support the struggling game, developers Boss Key have said they'll be moving on from the game to new projects. In a surprisingly candid update, the developer wrote, The fact is, lawbreakers failed to find enough of an audience to generate the funds necessary to keep it sustained in the manner we had originally planned for and anticipated. They went on to say, We will continue to support the game in its current state, but we also need to focus on other projects with fresh creative leaders. We have been working on something new, and we can't wait to share more about it. It is a passion project that we're in complete control of, so that's definitely kind of a bummer for the folks at Boss Key, but not too surprising given the early reports of the game's player numbers. Best of luck to everyone at that studio as they try their hand at something new. In a completely unsurprising support report, Overwatch recently got a new hero added to the game, and just like Glockwork, people are really, really trying to find porn of her. Y'all work fast. Pornhub reports via its Insights blog that searches for Brigitte have skyrocketed since Brigitte was added to the roster late last month, increasing by a whopping 6,200%. Wow, y'all are thirsty. In fact, there were more than 2 million total searches for Brigitte in a whopping 10 days after her launch. And not only that, people were hornier for Overwatch than ever in general thanks to Brigitte, with Overwatch searches jumping up more than 200% on their own. In terms of overall character popularity, Brigitte now holds the top spot over D.Va, followed closely by Tracer and Widowmaker. That's just impressive. Stay thirsty, my friends. 
It looks like one of the most popular graphic novels of all time is going to make it to the small screen. FX has ordered a pilot for Brian K. Vaughn's Why the Last Man, a limited comic series that asks what would happen if every male on the planet, save one, suddenly died. The comic was praised by fans and critics alike for tackling complex gender and political issues in a darkly humorous way, a combination that has been attractive to Hollywood for years. There's been some iteration of this adaptation in the works for pretty much since the comic finished its run, but it looks like FX is going to be the first to cross the finish line. They've hired American Gods' Michael Green and Luke Cage's Aida Meshaga Kroll to showrun and Master of Nuns' Melina Masukas to direct the pilot. A pilot does not mean a series will be ordered, however, even on a high-profile IP like this, but poor York's adventures are now a step closer to being real. Steven Spielberg has owned the rights to Stephen King's and Peter Straub's The Talisman since 1982, and despite the story being perfectly Spielbergian, he has never really been able to get a movie adaptation off the ground. That might be changing, however. In a recent interview with Entertainment Weekly, Spielberg says that he's making The Talisman a priority and hopes to get the project off the ground sometime in the next two years. He wouldn't commit to directing, he may only produce, but it's on his mind. King and Straub's novel is about a young boy named Jack Sawyer who discovers he can flip between our world and a fantasy mirror universe Universe while on an adventure to save his dying mother, and is one of the only remaining Stephen King stories that has managed to not find its way onto the big or small screen. We have some sad news to report. Studio Ghibli co-founder Isao Takahata has passed away at the age of 82, reportedly from lung cancer. Takahata collaborated with a long time with friend Hayao Miyazaki on just about every Ghibli movie and wrote and directed one of the all-time saddest movies ever made, Grave of the Fireflies. He wasn't always so serious, though. He made the comedy My Neighbors, the Yamadas, and the adventure film Pompoko, both animated by Studio Ghibli. His last film was The Tale of the Princess Kaguya, which was nominated for Best Animated Film at the Oscars three years ago, so thank you for all that you have given us over the years, Mr. Takahata. We, we will so miss you. So that does it for our weekly news roundup. Be sure to leave a comment about any of these stories, or better yet, in honor of Mr. Takahata. Why don't you let us know about your favorite Ghibli film?